All right, so we are going to talk about symmetry. Um, and symmetry, we're going to talk about is only to the x-axis, symmetric to, oh, spelling that wrong, x-axis, symmetry to the y-axis, and to the origin. Okay, now, uh, let's talk about the x-axis. Um, first of all, let me just do a quick little sketch. If I am symmetric to the x-axis, then that means that I have a graph that um, can be folded over the x-axis, whereas half of that graph, once folded over the x-axis, lies right on top of the other half of the graph. So this is an example of a graph that is symmetric to the x-axis. Now I want you to notice that um, if I'm symmetric to the x-axis, I am not a function. It does not pass the vertical line test. So any graph that is symmetric to the x-axis is not considered a function, okay? However, this is an example of um, a graph that is symmetric to the x-axis. Now I want you to notice that in this graph, if I were to, let's say, put a point here, let's say this was 2, 3, the point 2, 3. And the point across the x-axis on the other side, symmetric to this point, would be here. Um, it would have the same x-coordinate, wouldn't it? But it would just be equidistant to the x-axis on the other side. So the y-coordinate would be the opposite. So when we're talking about symmetry to the x-axis, we're talking about the same x-coordinate but different y-coordinates. Um, so there's a test that we can use to determine if a graph is symmetric to the x-axis. We can replace the y-coordinate with the opposite of y. And if we get the same equation after, right, if it gives me the same equation, if it simplifies to the same thing it started as, then it is symmetric to the x-axis. Now I'll do examples after this, but this is, um, this is what... Uh, symmetry to the x-axis looks like. Now, symmetry to the y-axis. Symmetry to the y-axis looks like this, for example. And again, uh, half the graph, if I fold it across the y-axis this time, will land on the other side, uh, on the opposite side of the graph, um, right on top of it. So if I had a point here, let's say this point was 2, 3, what changes? Well, the x-coordinate is not going to be the same. What stays the same is the y-coordinate. So now it's the opposite of the original x-coordinate, but the y-coordinate stays the same. So now if I have symmetry to the y-axis, my x-coordinate changes, but my y-coordinate stays the same. So in this case, we're going to replace, oops, that is going off my screen. For this situation, we're going to replace the x with the opposite of x. And if we get back the same function or same equation, then it is symmetric to the y-axis. Now, notice that if I have symmetry to the y-axis, I have a function. It passes the vertical line test. So we also call these graphs, and again, like I said, this is a function. We call these graphs that are uh, symmetric to the y-axis, we call them even functions. This is an even function because it is symmetric to the y-axis. So we can test to determine if a function is even by replacing x with negative x. And if it gives me the same thing that it originally had, then it is symmetric to the y-axis or it is called an even function. This is saying the same thing that this says, replace x with the opposite of x. And if it gives you the same thing as you started, then it is symmetric to the y-axis or known as an even function. It's just that I could put it in function notation because it is a function, whereas this is not a function, so I cannot use function notation for this. Origin. So a graph that is symmetric to the origin looks like this. I mean, there are other graphs, obviously, too, but this is something that is only symmetric to the origin. So if I have a point here, let's say 2, 3, symmetric, over the origin, that means I could flip it over the origin, which is the center of these, you know, axes. Flip it over the origin onto the opposite side, right? And it'll land right on top of the other side of the graph. So in this case, the x-coordinate changes and the y-coordinate also changes. So we replace y with negative y and x 
with negative x, and if I get back the same thing that I started with, it is symmetric to the origin. Now, again, notice that if I have symmetry to the origin, this passes my vertical line test. All these type of graphs that are symmetric to the origin will pass the vertical line test, which means that if a function, or sorry, if a graph is symmetric to the origin, then it is a function. So anything that is symmetric to the origin is also called an odd function an odd function. And we could test to determine if a function is odd by replacing x with the opposite of x. And if it gives me the opposite of what I started with, or in other words, the opposite of y, then it is an odd function or symmetric to the origin. Okay, so symmetric to the x-axis, the y should change. Symmetric to the um, y-axis, the x we change. Symmetric to the origin, we change both x and y. If they give back the same thing we started with, then it passes that symmetry test. Now there are graphs that can be symmetric to all of these, one of these, or none of these. Okay, so it doesn't necessarily have to be symmetric to any of them. All right, so for example, All right, <clears throat> example one. Let's say that I have y is equal to x squared plus two. Let's test for symmetry, okay? Um, I'm gonna do a test to see if it's symmetric to the x-axis. I'll do a test to see if it's symmetric to the y-axis, and then I'll do a test to see if it's symmetric to the origin down here or something if I have space. Now hopefully you could recognize this as a parabola because you've done it in algebra. Um, Shift it up to, so you hopefully can determine what to expect. It is a function because it passes the vertical line test if I were to graph it. And for every x that I put in here, there is only one y outcome that comes out of it. So if I put like one, the number one for x here, I only get one y out. If I put the number two here, I only get one outcome for y. So this is a function. Now let's see, <clears throat> well actually based on the fact that it is a function, I know it's not going to pass the symmetry test for the x-axis, but it could potentially for y or origin. <clears throat> and remember that testing to determine if a function or an equation is symmetric to the y-axis, you're testing to determine if it is an even function. And if you're testing to determine for symmetry to the origin, you're testing to see if it's an odd function. Okay, so if you're asked to just test for symmetry, that's one thing. But if you're asked to determine if a function is even or odd, you're testing for y and y axis and origin symmetry, particularly. Okay, so you know I could ask it different ways. Say test for symmetry. Is it symmetric to this? This this? Or is it an even function? Or is it an odd function? All of this kind of means the same thing. So I'm not expecting it to be symmetric to the x-axis because this is a function. And remember that if we have symmetry to the x-axis, they're not functions. But I'll show you how to do it anyway. We're replacing our y with the negative y, right? So <clears throat> where I see y in my original um, equation, I'm going to replace y with the opposite of y, right? I'm going to make sure after I do that, I want to get this back to positive y. So I'm going to multiply everything by negative 1 which means this becomes a positive y, this becomes a negative x squared, and a negative 2. So I replaced my y with negative y, and then I'm going to simplify it so that I have y alone on the left again. Notice that after I simplified it, this does not match this, right? This does not match this at all, which means that it is not symmetric to the x-axis. Once I replace y with negative y and simplify, if I don't get what I had to begin with, it is not symmetric to the x-axis, which I, that's what I expected because it is a function. So I'm not symmetric to the x-axis for this graph. Now let's test for the y-axis. In other words, is it an even function? Now saying y is equal to x squared plus 2 is also the same thing as saying f of x is equal to x squared plus 2, right? Oops, you can't see that. I'll write it under here. 
This is the same thing as saying f of x is equal to x squared plus 2, right? Because f of x takes the place of y if it is a function. If it is not a function, I cannot use this notation. If it is a function, then I can replace y with f of x. So this is the same thing. And to test for y-axis symmetry, or to determine if a function is even, we replace x with negative x and see what happens. So I'm going to put it in function notation. I'm going to replace x with negative x. So everywhere I see an x, I'm going to replace it with negative x. And let's see what happens. So this is equal to when I simplify. Anything negative squared, if I have an even exponent, goes back to being positive. Right? Any negative number squared is going to be positive. So this goes back to x squared, and this stays plus 2. And notice that after I simplified this, this is the same. I keep forgetting that. I can't see it over here. Notice that after simplifying, this is the same thing that I started with, right? It matches x squared plus 2, x squared. It matches the original function. f of the opposite of x is the same thing as f of x f of the opposite of x is the same thing as f of x. It passes that test, which means that this graph is symmetric to the y-axis, or it is also an even function. And I'll show you what the graph looks like real quick after this. Now, <clears throat> let's do origin test. So, let me move this up a little bit because I have some space. All right. Well, let's see if it's symmetric to the origin or if it is an odd function. Now, again, because this is a function, right, I could put in function notation. And according to this, I want to determine if the opposite of x, when I plug it in, gives me the opposite of the original function. Or I'm replacing x with negative x and y with negative y. So let me show you what that means in function notation. I'm going to do f of negative x again and see what happens. So everywhere I see an x, I pretty much already did it here. I replace it with the opposite of x, okay? And then I simplify it. But let's see what happens. This goes back to x squared plus 2. This goes back to the original function. It does not go back to the opposite of the original function. It goes back to the original function. It does not pass the origin test. Therefore, it is not an odd function. So. This particular graph, and let me show you what it looks like rough sketching. This is what it looks like. It is a parabola, and later on, hopefully you'll be able to do this quickly if you can't already. Shift it up to, looks like this. That's what this graph looks like. It's a function. It's obviously not symmetric to the x-axis. It's not symmetric to the origin, but it is symmetric to the y-axis. So this one is symmetric to the y-axis only, or it is an even function. Now, not everything has to pass all the tests or any of the tests. It could pass all the tests. I don't know. All kinds of functions that exist and relations that exist out there. So let me do one more example. Let's do y is equal to x to the third minus x, for example. And let's test x-axis symmetry, y-axis symmetry, an origin symmetry, okay? Now, hopefully you guys can look at this and determine already, based on the look of it, that it is a function. Why? Because I've, I replaced my x's with any numbers. I only get one outcome for y. For every x, there corresponds one y. So I already know that this is a function, which means that I could rewrite it if I want to, like this, f of x is equal to x to the third minus x. So I can already determine that it's not going to be symmetric to the x-axis, but I'll show you that anyway. But I can maybe test to see if it's symmetric to the y-axis or the origin, or if it's an even function, or if it's an odd function. Okay, so let's see what we get. I'll show you x-axis symmetry test anyway just for practice, but I'm expecting this not to work. I replace y with negative y third, only y I replace with negative. Then I multiply everything by negative 1 to get back to y on the left, right? And that changes all the signs in my function. And obviously, this does not match the original situation, which means it's not symmetric to the x-axis. And that's what we expected because it is a function. Let's see if it's symmetric to the y-axis. I'm going to replace my x with negative x. 
So everywhere I see an x, right, I'm going to replace it with negative x. So be careful with your signs here, okay? And let's simplify it. Now, when I have a negative to an odd exponent, it spits back the opposite of. So it gives me the negative case. Negative, negative, this becomes a positive. So this does not match this, does it? The signs are different. This is not symmetric to the y-axis, and this is not an even function. It is not equal to the original, right? It does not match the original case. So this is not an even function. Let's see if it's odd, and I can already tell that it is. Now, I already did this test, right? I already know that this is equal to this. I did it here. I placed all my x's with negative x and then simplified. Now, I want you to notice that this is the same thing as the opposite, right? I could take a negative out. I could factor a negative out. The opposite of x to the third, sorry, minus x. Oops. Minus x. Minus x. Right? So if I distribute this x, or this negative, I get back the opposite of x to the third plus x. Now, I want you to notice that this is the opposite of the original function, isn't it? The original function is x to the third minus x. It's the opposite of that, or in other words, the opposite of f of x. This is exactly what my origin test or my odd function test says. So I got, when I, when I replaced x with negative x, I got the opposite of the original function, which means that my graph is symmetric to the origin, or it is also known as an odd function. So, so these kind of situations look, you know, like that kind of thing. So it's symmetric to the uh, origin. Now again, not every function, not every equation is symmetric to um, all of these or any of these. Some of them are, are not symmetric to any of them, but I'm showing you cases where some of it works. I'm going to do one more example, and I want to show you y squared is x plus 4. So I want to show you uh, this. Oopsie. I want to show you um, a situation where it may work. I may not do all of these because I can already tell what happens by looking at it, but um, I'm going to show you what happens if it is symmetric to the x-axis, for example, and I want to look at this and determine that this is not a function. How do I know that this is not a function? If you were to solve for y on the left, you'd have to square root both sides, correct? So I would square root the left. Actually, let me move that over a little bit. I would square root the left. Let me move it down here. Square root, square root. Square root the left to get y. Square root the right-hand side to get this. But when I do that, I get plus or minus on the right-hand side. Now, what I want you to notice is that if I plug in a number here, let's say I plug in 5. When x is 5, right, just to show you, when x is 5, I get 5 plus 4 or 9. I get plus or minus the square root, and I get y is equal to plus or minus 3. I get two outcomes for y. I plugged in one number for 5 and got two numbers for y. There's one x and two different y's. That means that this is not a function. You're supposed to only get one x and one y. I put one x in, I should get one y out. That's a function. For every x, there corresponds one y. This is not a function. I put it in x and I got two different y's out. This is not a function. So based on the fact that this is not a function, I could technically say I'm not expecting it to be symmetric to the y-axis. It could be. It might not be. Some, some non-functions are symmetric to the y-axis. Some of them are symmetric to the origin. But I'm not going to ask you if it's an even or odd function because it's not a function. But I can still test for symmetry here. Uh, let's see if it's um, symmetric to the x-axis. I'm going to replace my y with negative y. So this is what it's going to look like. Replace my y with negative y. Right? Everything else stays the same. And then simplify. And like I said, negative y squared. Anything squared that's negative goes back to being positive. And I want you to notice that when I replaced my y with negative y, I got the same thing that I had to begin with. That means that this test worked, and it is symmetric to the x-axis. So this is an example of what it looks like when it is symmetric to the x. I'm going to do a quick test for y. I'm going to replace x with negative x. But obviously, when I replace x with negative x, can't simplify anymore. 
it's not going to give me the same thing I started with, so it's not symmetric to the y-axis. And then if I replace for the origin, if I replace x with negative x and y with negative y, this is what it looks like when I test for the origin if it's not a function. This is going to simplify that. This is going to stay the same. It's not going to be the same thing that I started with, not symmetric to the origin, only symmetric to the x-axis. Now, these are examples that I chose particularly um, to work for certain, you know, under certain situations, but there are, are functions, there are equations that are symmetric to one of these, all of these, or none of these. So remember that, okay? One of these, all of these, or none of these. There are a lot of different scenarios that can happen, but this is what it looks like to actually run your test. So remember that if I'm testing for symmetry to the x-axis, I replace y with negative y, and then simplify. If I get the same thing I started with, it's symmetric to the x-axis. To determine if I'm symmetric to the y-axis is the same thing as to determine if I'm an even function. I replace my x with negative x. If I get the same thing that I had to begin with, then it is symmetric to the y-axis, or it is known as an even function. To test for my odd function, I replace both y um, and x with the opposite, or in function notation, replace x with negative x if I get the opposite of the original function, then I am symmetric to the origin or also known as an odd function.